What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Today we're going to talk about uh, the results of the Nino, Scarlet and Violet, Scarlet and Violet, Scarlet and Violet uh, FF number 62. Uh, but more importantly, the fact that this is uh, one of the biggest Series 2 tournaments we've had so far. It actually might be the biggest Series 2 tournament so far. I don't know how big the Beanie Brawl was. Uh, but the results of this tournament are going to be more indicative of what we can expect out of Series 2 than the Beanie Brawl. That was like the initial peak at the format. Uh, and here we get uh, more of an understanding of what's changing, uh, what we can expect going forward, and what are the top tiers. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this standpoint on time, do me a favor, leave a like in this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And that's my comment question of the day. What other uh, Pokemon do you think are going to be top tier besides what I mentioned in this video? So yeah, we're going to be going through the results, but I do have one Pokemon in particular that I want to talk about right here. His name's Iron Hands. You might have heard of him. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. So... This tournament had uh, 396 players. I actually competed. Uh, I'm right here. I got top 16. Uh, I used a really cool team with uh, Slitherwing. If you guys want to check out my run, I uploaded it to YouTube. It's like two and a half hours long. It went up yesterday. You can just go to my channel and look at that. Uh, but what I noticed throughout this tournament, uh, anecdotally, was a high amount of Iron Hands uh, usage and that uh, the teams are similar to series one in how they function but they're different in the pokemon that make them up and i i guess that it feels like the way that you adjust for series two is you could use no um no like past or future forms at all and do just fine uh however i i don't think it's like recommended to be honest if we look at like the top teams right there are teams that have one past form. This team with the Iron Hands could have worked just as well with, with a Hariyama, in my opinion. Um, but like, yeah, it, it feels like the teams that were affected the least were like Trick Room teams. Uh, this one with the Iron Jugulus, uh, I'm not sure how they would have changed it uh, to not fit the Iron Jugulus, but I would assume that Iron Jugulus in the past would have been like a Murkrow or some other Tailwind user. You sort of catch my drift. I think the biggest Pokemon impact in the format uh, are actually going to be Iron Hands and Iron Bundle, uh, which is super weird because initially going into the format, we thought it would be uh, Fluttermane. But yeah, so what's the deal with Iron Hands? Iron Hands ended up winning the whole thing. Uh, I want to cover him first before I talk about like the more tangential points I have. Uh, but it won the whole thing. Lunar CD won this uh, whole tournament with Assault Vest, Terra Grass, Iron Hands, uh, Safety Goggles, Arcanine, Iron Bundle with a Focus Sash. Life Orb, Golden Go, nas uh, Nasty Plot Standard. Uh, we have a Garganical and we have a Moongus. So, uh, this team looks absolutely heat. I think it's very good and it's no wonder this one. In fact, if you look at second place, Joe UX9's team uh, is kind of similar. You have like a hyper offensive mode, but more than anything, you're like a bulky cycling team with uh, centered around Garganical. Because Garganical is like one of the best Pokemon ever. Um, it has this move called Salt Cure, if you don't know. Uh, but Salt Cure basically uh, deals a little bit of initial damage. It's 40 base power. And then if you can basically hold that Pokemon down for uh, for uh, eight turns or like just protect and like play your cards right there, uh, you're you're good. Like it just goes down. Um, it stays on if they switch out, I believe. Like it, there's no there's no restrictions on how the move works. Uh, and it does a quarter damage to steel and water types, which is absolutely insane. Uh, considering how good steel and water types are in this format, uh, like Golden Go and stuff. But yeah, uh, you can see that Iron Hands sort of functions in this team archetype by the fact that uh, there's... So let me point out a few a few key pieces, right? We see an Amoongus, we see an Arcanine, we see Iron Hands, we see Garganical. Basically, Iron Hands has access to Fake Out. Uh, the Arcanine is going to be able to Intimidate uh, or Will-O-Wisp or Snarl, whatever it needs to. And Amoongus is a regenerator Pokemon with like Paul and Puff to support the team and Rage Powder and Clear Smog to just do Amoongus things, right? So basically, if Garganical is able to Salt Cure something and you fake it out that turn, or maybe you lead off like Arcanine Garganical, and then the next turn you go for Salt Cure and bring in Iron Hands, now they take the initial damage from Salt Cure and then they take the uh, 1 8th at the end of the turn. Now, you fake out with Iron Hands and you switch in Arcanine or Amoongus depending on which is better for the situation. Like, it's a very cycle-heavy team, right? You sort of get what's going on. It's not like necessarily stall, 
because you can break it uh, effectively, but it's like, it, it's it's cycling. It's really cool. Uh, so these top two teams use those very effectively. Whoa, I'm interrupting the video. I have a big announcement, guys. Uh, I wanted to let you guys know that I have launched my Patreon once again. You guys can support me and you get access to uh, some extra videos uh, each month. Basically, every Sunday, I drop my team builder video where I build the team in front of you. I go through my thought process on what I'm actually going to be using on Ranked that night. You can see that I actually just uploaded the uh, Iron Thorns team builder today. You can check that out uh, if you become either a Patreon and join the Discord, and then you just, you know, click the link in the Patreon part of the Discord to get to that video. Or you can actually become a channel member by clicking the join button that's on your screen right now below this video. Uh, it's $4.99 a month and it helps support the channel, lets me pay my editor and my artist and gets you the exact same benefit where you're able to watch these team builder videos for the team that I'm using that week. So yeah, I just wanna let you know, you get that for Patreon, you get that for uh, becoming a channel member, and you even get that if you get gifted a sub on my Twitch, or if you just get a sub yourself. So yeah, uh, back to the video. Thank you all for the support. No pressure to join. I just wanna let you know that that is an option to help me out and you get a little bit of extra content. Yeah, let's get back to the video. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, Iron Hands also find itself uh, not only in those sorts of teams, but like hard trick room teams. Uh, if we look at uh, Arcane VGC, I actually faced this person in uh, in the tournament. Uh, they have a Ferrigraph and an Iron Hands because Iron Hands is actually a really good offensive Pokemon, just stat wise. Uh, this dude has 140 base attack uh, and it's like bulk is really good. The only bad stat is the 68 special defense, uh, which is made up for easily by the fact that it has, it can just run like an assault vest. So yeah, and you'll see that most players did that. This Iron Hands is Terror type fighting assault vest, but if I remember, um, they told me that actually it wasn't meant to be fighting. I would assume it's meant to be grass because that's the most common uh, variant of it. So yeah, under Trick Room, uh, Iron Hands is super, super scary. It's able to KO a lot of common things in the format. If we look at like common Pokemon that it can deal with, uh, Roaring Moon is uh, a dark dragon type, which it can just smack with a close combat or a drain punch and you know, it has bad defense, so there's a good chance you just one-shot this thing. Uh, Iron Bundle, despite having a super high special attack stat, uh, it doesn't have the ability to hit uh, Iron Hands for super effective. So you just drain punch that thing, get all your health back, and usually get a KO uh, because, you know, it has great defense, but it doesn't have good HP. Uh, King Gambit is a Pokemon that really hates Iron Hands, uh, and I know because I used one. Uh, you have to be really careful with this guy because not only can you be fake out food, uh, but you can just get drain punched, lose your Pokemon altogether, and then all that HP goes into Hands. And also Hands does well into Garganical, which won the whole tournament uh, with the support of Iron Hands, but obviously, you know, it also does well into it because it is a rock type. Uh, and to pr prevent it from getting like one shot by fighting type moves, a lot of Garganical are actually running Terra Poison right now because it's also good into like Toxic Spikes, which funny enough, I think Joe actually ran Toxic Spikes. Yep, Toxic Spikes on Miascarada because it's good versus Garganical and Dondozo and stuff. Uh, but because they're able to absorb Toxic Spikes with that and support their team, they're also able to actually switch in on fighting moves now, uh, making them not really take that much. So uh, yeah, so basically if you're able to hit this thing with a Drain Punch or a Close Combat before it Terras or if it doesn't tear at all, uh, you're in a really good spot. And the Drain Punch is also really good for um, sort of like fending off that Salt Cure damage. As for ways that people are like beating Iron Hands right now, another trend that you'll see is uh, that there's a lot of Arcanine usage. I would call this tournament the official death of Tauros Water uh, because Tauros Water, as good of a Pokemon as it is, uh, it doesn't like facing Meowskarata and it doesn't like facing Sylveon. Uh, it doesn't have the benefit of taking neutral from Sylveon, but the biggest blow to it was Iron Hands. It was one more Pokemon that put it over the edge. We see no Tauros Water in Top Cut. We see a Tauros Fire. Uh, there's a Tauros Water, or no, not not in Top Cut, but like in Top 16. We see one Tauros Water actually um, by Mal TCG, or not Mal TCG, uh, Yoshi and Lugia. Is this Tauros Water or is it Tauros Fighting? Yeah, it's Aqua Breed. So we do see one uh, in Top Cut. I don't believe there's a second. There might be though. Yeah, no, this is 50 second place. So there's no more in top cut after that. Because uh, I believe top cut was just top 32. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Tauros Water is no longer good, basically. Not not that it's not good. It's just like not as reliable uh, because a lot of the Pokemon in the format are able to deal with it. Uh, Meowskarada, uh, 
Terra flying um, acrobatics from Roaring Moon is also quite good into it. And of course, like I mentioned, uh, Iron Hands. Iron Hands is just basically able to switch in on this thing after the Intimidate happens, right? And then it's able to go for something like a wild charge into it or fake it out, force it to like have to switch in and switch out. Uh, it, it It's it's not like, I don't know, it, it having that weakness to Iron Hands makes it less reliable. So a lot of people are opting for the fire type Pokemon now. Uh, so Arcanine is basically our best Intimidator again, which is so weird to say, because for a while it was kind of looking like this wasn't Arcanine's gen, but I guess he's back. So basically Arcanine does very well into Iron Hands, uh, which is why you see a lot of Arcanine throughout this format, uh, or throughout this tournament. Because Arcanine is able to intimidate Iron Hands and it has the bulk to eat things like uh, a Drain Punch, which they mostly run over close combat, and a Wild Charge, because Wild Charge actually isn't that strong, it's only uh, 90 base power. So after that Intimidate, Arcanine gets um, to live that hit pretty effectively, uh, and it can go for a Will-O-Wisp into Iron Hands. Now keep in mind, a Will-O-Wisp into Iron Hands is basically shutting it down for the rest of the game. It's not going to be able to come back from that. Yes, it has very massive attack, uh, but its moves that it runs are 90 and... 75 base power they're not that strong cutting those in half even off of that massive attack stat cutting these uh 75 base power moves to what would that be 37 base power basically makes them like it, they hit about as hard as a quick attack from like a normal type so that isn't very good um and yeah it, it's it's like a way to just shut it down entirely and while there are some terra fire iron hands running around to avoid getting burnt uh, even then, like, it's it's not exactly worth going for the Terra Fire into these things. And Terra Grass is a lot better, because another way to beat Iron Hands is Amoongus. So, Iron Hands does have access to Ice Punch, however, the Volt Switch variant is a little bit more common right now, because of how it's able to do that cycling motion that I had mentioned before with the Amoongus, the Arcanine, and the Garganicle. Uh, so, Volt Switch is a little bit better for that slow switch. Even if it doesn't do damage, being able to switch out on something at the end of the turn is just really good. Uh, and it's just, you know, breaking sashes and stuff, the usual. Uh, but uh, because you don't run that coverage on a lot of them, and you want to run Terra Grass to make sure that you don't get spored by Amoongus, it makes it so uh, it basically gets walled up by Amoongus because it resists both of its stabs. They usually run Rocky Helmet, they have a generator, and they can just Rage Powder into this thing, causing it to be um, a dead piece on, on the field. Like, it doesn't do anything. But, like, chip at the Amoongus, which will just regenerate all that health away. Uh, or all that health back. So yeah, uh, that's really big. Putting it to sleep is really good, which is why they tend to run Terra Grass. Um, but yeah, like that that is basically how you like play around um, Iron Hands, which is why you see so many of these throughout the tournament. There's an Arcanine on this team, Arcanine on this team, top three. You can notice a trend going on here, right? <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's the whole Iron Hands talk. Now I want to talk about, well, I also talked about Garganical and a few other Pokemon like Arcanine. Uh, now I want to talk about uh, just general teams. This isn't the end of Dondozo. A lot of people said like, hey, bringing Dondozo into the format um, was good in series one. However, in series two, maybe these things like Iron Bundle, uh, maybe these things like Fluttermane, maybe these like grass types, even like Iron Hands itself, uh, will be good against Dondozo and make it no longer viable. Well, you know, Alex Underhill just kind of disproved that. Uh, <laughs> we actually see a, another cool combination that I want to talk about in a second. Uh, but Dondozo, Terra Dragon, just standard set, standard Tatsugiri, it still works, right? This team did phenomenally. In fact, I lost to a Dondozo, uh, and I think there might be more than one Dozo in Top Cut. Let me see. So there's one here, uh, and I'm pretty sure there was one more in Top 32, right? Yes, here it is. Spencer VGC, 29th. Uh, there's another Dondozo. And yeah, there's one just outside of Top 32. I think maybe, like, Top Cut was Top 64. Some people had to play Top 64. I didn't um, because of my resistance, but yeah. So... Dondozo still exists, and I guess the reason Dondozo is still valuable is because the format didn't actually change that much. Uh, a lot of people said like, oh, hey, you know, Torkoal's gonna be more common, so Terra Grass or Terra Steel Dondozo under Trick Room get blown up by Eruption. Not really, Torkoal usage actually isn't nearly as high as one would expect uh, when it benefits so many past forms, and that could be due to the fact that the past forms will usually just run Protosynthesis Booster Energy anyways, uh, where the future forms will not get a boost from the sun. It's sort of like just uh, an effect of what's good and what isn't. Like, yeah, you could use like booster energy uh, flutter main, uh, or if you want to make it even harder to get set up, you could use sun flutter main. It, you, see, you see what I mean? It's it's too much effort. 
so while Torkoal is probably good, it, it's not like nearly the usage it needs to be to be top tier. Uh, but yeah, uh, what was I talking about again? Yo, oh yeah, Don Dozo. So the Pokemon that we thought were going to be Don Dozo didn't exactly beat Don Dozo. So that's a big takeaway. What I want to talk about here is this, uh, I don't know how common this was before now, but this was a really cool combination of Pokemon that Alex Underhill used. We see Cork Drive, Booster Energy, Iron Moth with Acid Spray, Heat Wave, Energy Ball, and Protect. We also see Choice Specs, Fluttermane. Now, I didn't play against Alex Underhill, nor did I watch any of his matches, unfortunately. Uh, but I can tell you something that I know for a fact about uh, Iron Moth. And that is the fact that Iron Moth, you have to deliberately lower the special attack EVs to actually get the booster energy to give you a speed boost. You can see that if you run timid, you have 92, 178, you're gonna speed boost, or you're gonna uh, special attack boost. My theory, and I'm pretty sure this is exactly what happened, I, it isn't even really a theory, and it just makes sense, uh, is he ran something similar to this, right? And the acid spray would then outspeed the choice specs Fluttermane, allowing him to reliably combo into other Pokemon. So keep in mind, this is also good into Dondozo because uh, both of these Pokemon naturally outspeed Dondozo. Versus opposing Dondozo, while they will ignore your stat changes, you can't uh, or they can't ignore their own stat changes. So he's able to go for something like Acid Spray to harshly lower its special defense into a Choice Specs Moonblast, which will probably deal a ton of damage in one shot, uh, Terra Dragon Don Dozos, and like Mystical Fire for Steel, like that sort of thing. Like it beats Don Dozo, but it also beats a ton of other really scary things in the format. For example, while you wouldn't normally be able to use like a Fake Tears on a um, Golden Go, uh, or what am I saying? You know, forget that point. I, I just completely forgot that it's a poison move for some reason. Sorry. Uh, while you wouldn't normally be able to, like, toxic and break Garganical through, like, conventional means, you could just one-shot it, right? Or one-shot whatever comes into that spot. Let's take this, like, first place team. Now, let's say that uh, the opponent didn't lead off with Iron Hands, so they didn't have Fake Out Pressure. And they had to face down a Fluttermane and an Iron Moth. And they lot off with any of these things. Depending on what goes on that first turn uh, with board positioning, Alex can basically take a free KO immediately by cutting the special defense in half, effectively making whatever move Fluttermane uses uh, twice as strong, and then hitting him with that Choice Specs move, taking a piece early. Defensive switches aren't really like great here because a lot of things don't want to switch into minus two special defense Moonblast, um, and it has good coverage to eat like it to just eat up anything it wants to. So yeah. That is, that is really cool. I really like that adjustment and I wanna build around this. I actually think I'm gonna do a shot on live with these guys at some point. So yeah, that is really cool. I really like that uh, tech that we saw uh, and it obviously was very reliable because it carried them all the way to top four. So yeah, uh, other things I noticed, there are a lot of Pokemon that are sort of falling off from series one. I would say Murkrow is the biggest loser here. And that's because we have more good Tailwind Pokemon. Namely, we see a lot of Tailwind from things like Iron Jugulus, which I originally thought was pretty bad, and I still think it is really bad, to be honest. Uh, but that is another good Tailwind Pokemon. I'm pretty sure if we take a look at this... Oh, there is no Tailwind. Never mind, it's just Life Orb. Okay. But the biggest one would actually be uh, Tailwind on Roaring Moon, which I'm pretty sure all of them run it. Yeah, because uh, Roaring Moon is base 119 speed. It's like around the same speed tier as stuff like Talonflame and Kilowattrel, which we're both able to set up Tailwind. Uh, Kilowattrel specifically is like the main comparison because Talonflame had priority. So yeah, uh, we have fast Tailwind users now. There are There's another option. There's a new dark type in town. Uh, it's also immune to taunt. You get the deal, right? And it's like offensive, so you no longer have to run this thing. So yeah, uh, it's not that Murkrow is bad. It's that Roaring Moon is a more offensive variant. So yeah. Uh, I actually don't have too much more I want to talk about about this tournament. Uh, I guess we can talk about that absolute stud that got top 16. Yeah, let's take a look at this team. Oh, yeah, the, the Slitherwing with the Booster Energy, Terra Fire, Flame Charge. Hey, I heard this dude at one point in the tournament made a play where he uh, Flame Charged his own Palafin to get a speed boost, calling out a Protect, and then close combated uh, and outsped a, uh, an Iron Bundle. That's pretty cool. Uh, at one point in that tournament, I heard that this dude actually went for a Terra Water Jet Punch plus uh, First Impression into a Iron Moth with a baby Palafin, not even the hero form, and got the KO turn one, allowing him to win that game. That was pretty cool, but he's running guillotine, so he's cringe. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.